with Councillor Rudd. <laughs> Councillor Rudd? <laughs> okay, well, until he comes on, I'll move on to item nine and I will know by Monday. I'm gonna call that ready. Councillor Bay. Hello. Thank you, Madam President. I have items number 10 and 11. Uh, I'm wondering, is uh, other Dola on? Yes, she is. Give me one second. Okay. Heather, can you hear me? Yeah. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, okay. Um, I don't have a copy of the agenda, so can you, is, can you just give me an address? So we have a special permit uh, to approve a car wash located at 2027 Park Street. Uh, okay. Yep. This is uh, ba the old Babies R Us, and they're converting the building into um, a pseudo Delta Sonic type car wash. And there were two waivers with respect to driveway width and also um, uh, signage. Uh, the signs that were waived were already there as with Babies R Us, and the driveways were already there as well. Right, I recall this item, and I don't believe we had any questions before, or if we have any now. Um, I don't believe we did. There, there's another address uh, uh, for number 11. Uh, and that is a special permit to improve an indoor amusement creation at 900 North McBride. We discussed this as well. Oh, yes, this is the uh, fitness center, the women's fitness center on the north slide. On the north side, it was, um, it's across from the, uh, I believe the Butternut Plaza. It's in a new building and it's, uh, we had a lot of letters of support for this at the or at the uh, planning commission meeting. Okay. Uh, the waivers were with respect to parking and signage. Uh, Madam President, not sure if you have any uh, questions or concerns, but last time we talked about these, uh, nobody had any questions or expressed any concerns. I know that Councilor Hogan, the second district council, was in support. Yes. Uh, so with that said, I'll call both my items ready. Thank you, sir. Is you. Councilor Rudd on with us? Councilor Rudd? Okay, well, we'll keep moving. We'll move on to Councilor Green. Thank you, Madam President. You can hear me, right? Yes. Okay, great. Okay, so the first one is item 15, which is the revision to the food truck ordinance. So I know we've gotten a bunch of uh, emails lobbying us about this in the last uh, 24 hours. So I do just want to clarify a couple things on it. Um, so the first one is that this food truck legislation and last year's stuff, that doesn't, that's not what allows the Clinton Square Rodeo. The Clinton Square Rodeo is something that's permitted by getting a road closure permit. So it's the same process that the downtown farmer's market uses, something like that. So. What we're proposing this legislation here, if we um, were to pass that, that doesn't obligate us to do any rodeos, and passing it doesn't prevent the rodeos from coming. The rodeos are coming separate from the uh, this legislation. So, but then backing up a little bit, obviously we know with this COVID-19 issue, this is a really dire time for all the restaurants. Um, and they're such an important part of downtown. We're, uh, obviously looking to make sure that they can stay strong for the entire time. So something that we talked about um, this morning was it might be the case that it might make sense for the council to say that in this year, we are going to ask the administration to not approve any permits for the downtown rodeo. The idea being that this, by doing this, we would, you know, give all the restaurants a year to catch up and hopefully prevent any kind of the issues related to, um, <clears throat> the loss of business from all the buyers. With that being said, the Clinton Square aspect of this is a pretty small part of what the overall proposed legislation thinks does. One of the biggest changes is that we're adding a lot of new locations into other neighborhoods of the city. So we'd be adding locations 
um, in commercial corridors where there's not restaurants competing now. So that's particularly in light of everything going on right now, something that I think is a good argument for passing this because what it does is it potentially gives you know the food truck owners an opportunity to provide food in neighborhoods where right now it's kind of hard to get food in terms of the grocery stores being swamped and a lot of the restaurants being closed. So to me, that's one thing we should be looking at to try to move forward with this. Um, there's also some aspects of this that uh, provide protections for the restaurants. Welcome to WebEx. Please access code or meeting number followed by pound. Please enter your WebEx address and enter the pound. So one of them is that this proposal would increase the distance that food trucks are banned from operating from brick and mortar restaurants from 100 feet to 150 feet. Uh, it increases the fee for food trucks to operate a you know single use daily permit from twenty dollars to fifty dollars, and it also adds some increased enforcement mechanisms for the city uh, to make sure that if food trucks aren't following the rules, they're able to enforce the rules. Um, so I mean, I think for me going forward, I, I think for the vast majority of this legislation, it's something that's not really in dispute that everyone seems to be in agreement on. The one aspect where there is a lot of dispute on is is the Clinton Square, particularly in light of the uh, you know, COVID-19. So I think if it's the kind of uh, the majority of the council feels this way, I think the best thing to move forward would be move forward with the legislation, but to also ask the administration to hold off on issuing permits for Clinton Square for this year. I don't know if there's any, any questions. Um, any questions? Sharon? Did I have any questions? Yes, you have anything on that with the administration not moving forward with permits? Well, this is, this is Eric Gunnis. I, I can chime in if, if you prefer, Deputy Mayor. Um, good afternoon, everyone. So uh, we right now, the city, because of the circumstances, we aren't issuing event permits for any type of gatherings or any type of permits. That would include rodeos at this time. And so uh, if, if this is the direction, if this is the recommendation that's coming from council, uh, we, we certainly would oblige to not issue any food truck rodeo permits. Uh, and if there's a, a desire to do that through 20. Uh -uh. Sorry. Okay. And while we assess the situation, uh, we certainly can can hold off on issuing any rodeo permits if it's Clinton Square directly or if it is elsewhere. Um, but that certainly is feasible, and because of the situation, because of the state's directives on gatherings, um, no, none of those permits would be issued at this time anyway. Um, was that Pat that had a question? Pat. Me, President. What did you have a question? Yes, I do. Um, it's not so much of a question, just maybe a statement. So, Eric, would that be a, a statement by the mayor's office, official statement on record saying that there wouldn't be any truck rodeos in Clinton Square? I, well, that would be the intention in terms of whether it would be a statement or what the mechanism would be. Even even with the council approval, the, the administration and our, our staff in our central permit office and working with DPW and parks ultimately issue those permits. So uh, we've we've been working with multiple departments through this process. So so I would work with all of those colleagues to not issue any permits um, for whatever the determined amount of time is, if that's through 2020. I think is what Councillor Green was suggesting. So we have the ability and reserve the right to, to not issue those permits. And I think just to follow up on that, Eric, I think what you were saying earlier too is basically if the majority of the councillors ask the administration to hold off on issuing the permits this year, you would you would follow through on that. That's correct. So I mean, if the majority of councilors said that, I think it's important to reassure the restaurant owners in downtown Syracuse have been paying taxes all those years that that would be in effect. There would be no food truck rodeos in Clinton Square. I think a public statement would be needed. So we're on the same page with that, Eric. Sure, and and I think that if ultimately we would we would communicate out what what decisions are being made uh, on this topic, and certainly I'll I'll work with the rest of the administration and the team uh, so that we have some clear communication on that. Yeah, I mean I don't want to get into it. I, I'm a little puzzled uh, that sometimes I, I mean I'm I'm a little puzzled why the parks department doesn't have more of an active role in this as far as Clinton Square goes and. 
certainly why it's under you know the DPW committee as far as the permits being issued. Um, so, but I could as long as a public statement allaying the fears of these downtown merchants, I you know I would uh, go along with this. Although I probably will vote against the legislation. Thank you, Thank you Councilor. Um, this is Julie. I can add just I can um, answer Councilor Hogan's comment if you would like uh, from Parks. Certainly. Um, just for this, the actual food, the actual food truck rodeo at Clinton Square actually takes place on the street and not in Clinton Square itself. So that's why it technically falls under DPW and is less parks. It's because that's an actual road closure. If the food trucks were located within Clinton Square itself, um, then technically it would be more of a parks overroll, if that helps. Well, Commissioner, that's great. I guess when I, during my 34 years of the City Parks Department, we had a much more expansive view of what Clinton Square entailed uh, since we used to put festivals in there and, and, and anything in essence became Parks property. In fact, when I was on this Clinton Square renovation committee, uh, it was built to accommodate the farmer's market. Um, so that's perfectly okay. I just was wondering about it, how things are done nowadays, I guess. President Hudson, Sharon Owens. Yes, ma'am. So I, so I just pose the question as we consider this, if we're not going to issue any permits for 2020, why move on the legislation? And, and, and why not table it until we are ready to actually act on it um, yeah. at a later date? I, I just, that. Yeah. So actually, uh, Deputy Mayor, so most of the legislation doesn't have anything to do with Clinton Square. So a lot of it is opening up neighborhoods that don't currently allow food trucks. Um, so that's part of it. Part of it is increased enforcement issues. So the Clinton Square part of it is like 5% of the overall legislation. Um, so that's the reason. There's a lot of benefits to it that, that like the restaurants in our agreement with downtown communities in agreement with, you know, the nighttime service, something that everyone is in agreement with. So most of this is stuff that's not really controversial. The only controversial aspect is the Clinton Square one. So that's why it makes sense to move it, but just hold the Clinton Square part. But Michael, can I ask you a question though? Because if we're going to be shut down basically from this virus, we wouldn't be moving food trucks anyway, right? So, I mean, first of all, we don't know how long the virus is going to be. Second of all, I'm, you know, just like some restaurants are opening takeout, I, I would think if a food truck might be able to do that same thing, right? I mean, if you're able to serve takeout from a restaurant, potentially a food truck could do the same thing. Well, you know, okay, so we'll we'll move on in, on this one because the counselors are going to weigh in because as Councilor Hogan said, he's not going to vote for it. So we'll have a conversation amongst the counselors. President Hudson, could I say one more thing? Sure. Um, uh, you know, I, I, I agree with the deputy mayor, um, you know, and the counselor, I, I think Councillor Bay had a great suggestion. If these food trucks were maybe uh, in areas that are underserved, perhaps like the time of Jubilee Park or Kennedy Square or Skitty Park, I think they would perform quite a great service maybe to those communities. But looking at the legislation, none of those areas are included. Instead, there's a few city parks in the inner harbor and, and where there is there are other restaurants um so i just wanted to make that point clear yeah there. so i think i'll share the map with you council and i think there's a there's a ton of locations and so i'm not sure if we're all looking at the same thing so i'll share them. okay thank you counselor I, item 16. S you're muted. Michael? All right. So item 16 is going to be withdrawn. Um, so part of the, I guess we'd say non-controversial aspects of the food truck is the nighttime rodeo, um, which uh, would be from 10, would start at 10 o'clock at night, essentially. So we did that when all the restaurants are closed, so there wouldn't be any competition with existing restaurants. So we had originally talked about doing it in Perseverance Park, um, which is owned by Sura. But actually, in consultation with uh, the administration, they said it's actually going to be easier to just use uh, South Salina Street. So the trucks will park on South Salina Street and not need to go into Perseverance Park. Um, so therefore, we don't need the agreement with Sora. So therefore, we, you know, item 16 will be withdrawn. And I guess just on that point, too, this is another example of 
a part of the legislation that's that's not controversial. And I would just remind everyone too that actually a, a really high percentage of the food truck owners are city residents that are also struggling right now, like like every other business. Um, so aspects like this that allow them to be able to do some business later this year um, is also going to be a big help for them because you know they're struggling every day. So that's just another point out. So uh, item 17, this would be engineering item. So Mary, I don't know if you're on this. Yes, I'm here. Mary okay, Rabison, yeah. Mary Rabison, city engineer, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, item six, 17 and 18 is the authorization of, of issuance of bonds to provide for professional services and equipment for trail amenities for the Creek Walk phase two project um project authorization and bond ordinance um we had an agreement we have an agreement with the central new york planning and development board for one hundred and twenty thousand dollars. that was from phase one of the creek walk and there's fifty nine thousand six hundred and thirty five dollars left in the grant that can be spent so we've talked to dec and cny rpdb and they have approved us um, doing amenities for the Creek Walk Phase 2 project, which would include professional services, um, research by the Onondaga Historical Association for interpretive trail signage, professional graphic design services, sign fabrication services, and equipment and installation for at least one wheelchair charging station. Um, and we may also request some trail maintenance equipment. So um, that the account that was originally set up for Creek Walk Phase One has been closed because it was so old. So we're asking for a bond ordinance and project authorization for the remaining fifty nine thousand six hundred thirty five dollars, and it's a hundred percent reimbursable. Anyone have any questions? All righty. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. Mary, your item, okay, so item 18 as well. Yes, item 18 is the project authorization. Okay, item eight, item 19 is water item. Commissioner Aywald, are you? I don't know if you can hear me. So, yeah, hello, a little bit. Commissioner Aywald here. There you go. You can hear me? Okay, yeah, so item 19 is to amend the amount for the American leak detection uh, consultant who assists us in finding leaks within the distribution system and to authorize an extension of their contract for two additional fiscal years. Any questions? Nope. Okay. okay. Item 20 is a uh, parking garage. So if there's someone from DPW that can walk us through that one. Hi, it's uh, Corey Dunham. Um, yeah, it's a pretty straightforward just um, agreement for a company that wants uh, 50 spots um, in the garage. So pretty, uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, Corey, do we always do five years? Um. That's a good question. Off the top of my head, I don't know. I'm not sure if anybody else on the call has more of a historical what, view. One on thing it. I do know is for some of them that we've had before, a lot of times they like to have the length of it similar to the length of the lease that someone's entering into, just because mm -hmm. if someone's moving, they want to make sure that you know if they're signing a five-year lease, they don't only have three years. Of time. A lot of times that's a good reason. Also, uh, Council President, in the past, we have done uh, up to five years for parking contracts. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, item 21 is a, another water item. Hello, Hello. item 21, uh, request to authorize the funds transfer for uh, from water and cash capital to, um, to pay for a replacing of aging fleet vehicles. Any questions? Uh, has the fleet manager weighed in on this? I spoke to uh, Rich Devesti and also our lead mechanic, 
who oversees a lot of our stuff here at the water department. We went through all of our vehicles and looked at the ones with the, that were the oldest and had the highest mileage. And we looked at turning them over and we uh, coordinated with Rich as well. Do we have that list? Uh, there's an attachment with the letter. It was for uh, several small van or SUVs, a pickup and a couple, uh, one medium dump truck, a large dump truck, a bucket truck, and that would cover all the equipment we need for right now. Any more questions? Item 22. Item 22, I'm going to defer to uh, Eric, Director of Business Development. All right, thank you, Joe. Uh, so good afternoon again, counselors. Uh, so I work directly with Commissioner Awald on this one. Uh, this is a request that is related to our brownfield lean sale process. And you may recall this, uh, this property, which is at the corner of South Salina and Walrath, uh, was a former uh, Valvoline instant oil change. It was at one point a car wash and was delinquent, uh, tax delinquent for a number of years, uh, technically seizable, but the property was also a sp suspected contaminated site. And so what we've done in past years, and, and this property was included, was we did a sale of the liens that the city holds on the building to an applicant. And uh, the finance department would issue an RFP this individual uh, by the name of Michael Grubka requested to purchase the site and he has done so um, through a judicial foreclosure. Uh, so he successfully seized the building back through foreclosure. He is converting it now into a fully functional car wash facility again. Uh, he's investing about $400,000 into the project. And so as he's he's getting closer and closer to opening, uh, certainly the, the situation at hand might, might delay that opening. But um, as a part of this, when we did that lien sale closing and worked with the law department, uh, the intention was to also include um, water fees that from the previous owner, the same one that did not pay their city taxes, uh, had accrued approximately 15,000 in, uh, in unpaid water uh, bills. Um, as a part of the lien sale, what the city sold, the, the applicant paid $33,000 to the city to purchase those liens. And so the intent was to have the water fees be, be waived as a part of the sale. Um, ultimately, that, that was not included. So the request that we're coming back to council with is that um, the, the new owner of the facility that is converting and investing to make this into a, a car wash would have the ability to have those water fees be waived. Um, which was the intent back when this this brownfield lien sale was originally approved. Okay, we have any questions, concerns, Cho? It, who, it, Councilor Allen, is that you or or Cho, Councilor Majo? I'm sorry, didn't hear you. I said I'm here, but I don't have any questions. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, those are my items. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you. Um, we're going to go a little backwards. I think I saw Councillor Rudd jump on. Councillor yeah. Rudd? Does it work now? Okay. Yeah, we're working now. You have um, okay, items. So 8A is ready. It's okay. Law. Um, item 12 is the labor agreement. Um, I will probably, after the vote on 8A, I'll probably withdraw 12, depending on how that goes. <clears throat> um, 13 is the people soft stuff. I talked with, I had a little back and forth with Dave Proact on this. Um, basically, I would just, Dave, do you want to give an intro to the item to everyone? Are you there? Sure. The, uh, this legislation has been uh, in place since we went live with people soft. Um, what it ensures is that we have the ability to um, access county resources for technical and functional help with PeopleSoft. They charge us dollar for dollar, whatever we use. If we use a county employee, we're paying his uh, hourly rate per salary plus fringe. If we use a county consultant, we pay the same rate the county does. Uh, since day one, we've allocated $125,000 a year for this in my budget. Once again, our, our spending is actual based on what we need. So if we have a year with not, without a lot of changes, things are pretty stable. But generally, the bills run under $30,000 per year. Um, if we have to look at 
putting in a lot of changes, if there's new tax laws coming down, all sorts of stuff. Um, it can fluctuate. Some months we spend $300 on it. Some months we spend $9,000 on it. Depends if we find a bug, if we want to change how we budget, if we want to look at a new module. Um, counselor has suggested that we, I don't want to speak for him, but we should not go in at 125. He'd like to, like to see us go in much lower than that. He suggested us going in at 30. I'm, I'm not comfortable with that. That would tie our hands. I said, I said 35. I said, well, the data that you shared with me it showed that the spending the last two years has been a roughly 25,000. So I was saying if you need a little cushion, you can have 35. But if you need more than an extra 10 in the last two years, then it makes sense, I think, that you come back to the council, especially given all the uncertainty that we're about to experience. But um, I don't see any reason to authorize five times the last two years spending each year moving forward. Yeah, I don't know that I would necessarily disagree with that, but I, I'd, I'd like to see us come in at like a 50 or $60,000 so that if we're running close to 20 or 25 or 30 or 35 and we have a bad May or June, we're not, we're not hung up because of the um, legislative process trying to get work done. Okay. So well, you're you saying can... 50, Dave? I'm sorry? So you're saying 50? Yeah, I don't think we've spent over 50 in a while. And you know, it, it's a new world now, so I don't know what the next fiscal year looks like if we're gonna be instituting a lot of changes. But for the last two fiscal years, I provided that to Councillor Rudd. I think it was 24,000 and 27,000 for the last two fiscal years. But I do agree with Councillor Rudd's point because you can come back, you can come back actually for more. I understand that, but sometimes in running the day-to-day -day work, it does, it, 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 it introduces another complexity. Okay, well, we can sidebar a little discussion about what the appropriate amount is between you and the budget director and me. Okay, and and, and I'm the, one of the reasons, this uh, expired uh, some time, late 19, so we have not been able to pay balance of the bills to the county because our legislation has sunset it. That's okay. a, another reason to at least move it forward. Thank you. All right. I'm not opposed to moving it forward. I'm just opposed to having it 125,000. Sure. Um, okay. We'll talk. 14. Uh, so, I mean, I guess for the moment, I'll hold 13 with the intent to probably move it on Monday, but that we'll talk about the overall amount. Thank you. Um, 14, is Frank on? Do you want to say anything about the three plus one contract? Uh, uh, thanks. Um, so my, uh, the counselor and I had a little back and forth about whether we should uh, continue to move forward with this. We've spoken to the vendor. They feel strongly that they'll still be able to help us. Um, <clears throat> this is for, uh, as a reminder, this is for treasury services and the in the, um, the financial sense of the word. Um, so managing our um, cash balances. Um, these are the only folks who offer this service for small and medium size um, uh, metro, uh, uh, cities, um, uh, municipalities. So uh, they're out of Rochester. Um, I know that President Hudson, you had some reservations about the, the diversity of their workforce as do we and we'll continue to work with them and, and push them on that. But we do think that moving forward on the $15,000 engagement makes sense, particularly since they guarantee uh, as part of the contract a, uh, a threefold return on that or we don't pay the 15,000. Guarantee, right? Correct, it's in the contract, President Hudson. Okay. Um. So yeah, I think my my thought is there's little risk, so it's cool, it's okay to move it forward. Although I am suspicious, given the level of uncertainty that we have, how much we'll be able to precision in on our cash flow. But who knows? I I think that's a I I share your concern, um, but given the that the risk is so low, I think it it makes it's prudent to move forward. I think. Any other questions for fourteen? Okay. I'll call that ready. Thank you. Councillor Paniagua. Rita. 
Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Okay. So I am to introduce item number 23. Uh, this is to authorize the, the Commissioner of Finance to provide emergency cash flow, uh, not to exceed, exceed 25 million on behalf of the Syracuse City School District for funding year, fiscal year 1920. Are there any questions? Okay, so with that said, I uh, move this item as ready. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Carney. Thank you, Madam President. Can everybody hear me now? Yes. All right. So I have items 24 through 30. I don't know if Commissioner LaFay would like to walk us through those items and... Yep, I can do that. All right. Okay, item number 24 and number 25 are both requesting amendments to previous ordinances, both regarding um, related to capital accounts. 24, um, we're just requesting to for locations to be added. So there's no change in any of the funding or any, any way that we would spend it. Just adding locations for court improvements. Okay. Question about that. Um, item number 25, this is an, an older account from 2017. Um, for our Burnett Park pool improvements that are coming up, the quotes came in uh, higher than we had. So this is amending an old ordinance to uh, allocate 59,892 towards that. Commissioner, um, yeah, Commissioner, so, uh, turn your speaker down while you speak. Yep, sorry. Just a little bit. Right. Is that better? Still a little feedback, but it's all right. Is that better? Uh, it's better than it was. It's better than it was. <laughs> okay, sorry. Um, um, item number 20, the other, uh, other part of 25 is there's an outstanding balance owed to Syracuse Cooperative Federal Credit Union for 12000 And this is just allocating that so that we can pay that outstanding bill. So I, I guess my question, and it's, a, I don't want to say specifically towards you, but it's, you know, this is coming up in one of your items is, you know, have we as a city, and, and I think this is probably more geared towards finance and the administration, have we gone through, I mean, how many more of these outstanding bills do we have either in parks or in other departments? Because this dates back to 2012 that, you know, when I look back at it, that we owed the Cooperative Federal Credit Union for a little over 5000 I can only speak to this one. Yeah. Um, I was only made aware of it in the last few months. So it's the only one that I am aware of. Okay. Um, would you like me to go yeah. forward? Excuse yeah. me, think Frank, uh, uh, excuse me, uh, Council President, uh, Frank or Mary, um, if, you, if you're not prepared to respond to the Councilor's uh, question today, could you please get um, some response to him after. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Um, item number 26, we are withdrawing due to the current situation. There's no more funding available for that. So we are not going to complete our application for Kaboom. Okay. Item number 27, um, we would like to enter an agreement with Mary DeFuria, who was our previous aquatics instructor. Um, the 4,500 was to immediately start water safety instruction classes with our lifeguards. That obviously is not happening. So the 4,500, that would be the max to get us through June 30th. That's obviously not how much we would spend now. Um, but, but that is the intent of the agreement. So should we be able to open up and train our lifeguards, we would like her to provide the training. Do you think that's fe feasible, Commissioner? Honestly, I don't even know. You mean to, to even plan for the summer and the lifeguards? I don't know. I, I'm just hoping that we can have this in place so that should we get the call to open, even if it's in June 15th, we can get two weeks of instruction in. And that would reduce the cost, right? Absolutely, because this isn't, the 4,500 is the, the max. She would be billing us by the hour. Okay. Um, item 28, this is for the work that was done last year. We just need to amend last year's ordinance by an additional 1500 to pay an outstanding bill. Okay. 
and 29 is the items of the lifeguards. This is our annual non-residency waiver that we're requesting. And again, this is a big question mark right now. Okay. And 30, I believe, would be Owen or Janet. Counselors. Uh, a microphone for the next meeting. Counselors, this, this is Owen Kearney with City Plan. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, <clears throat> item number 30 is an agreement with Onondaga County or a request to authorize agreement with Onondaga County to install uh, about a 150 foot long piece of sewer pipe, redundant sewer pipe as part of our project in uh, Meacham Park. I think most of you are probably familiar with that project to install the overlook area right near the Seneca Turnpike Bridge. Uh, the county has a sewer in that area and because we're going to be disturbing that area and we don't want them to to be digging up our project if if they need to replace uh, that sewer in the future uh, they are supplying the sewer pipe we're digging a trench and putting it in as part of our project so again with the idea that in five ten fifteen years if they need to replace that it will already be in place this this is an agreement to authorize that work Okay. So unless there are any questions, I'm going to call all items other than 26, which is being withdrawn ready. Thank you, Councilor. Right, thank you. Councilor Allen. Thank you. I have items 31 through 51. Can you hear me? Good? Yes. Okay. All right. So 31, I think, um, is Kate on? She was. Are you here? You Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, great. Um, yeah, so item 31 is a request to enter, uh, to write a grant and enter into an agreement with the uh, New York State Department of Parks, Recreation and Historic Preservation. It's a certified local government grant, uh, program grant in an amount not to exceed 50,000. Um, and the grant is to fund phase three of the comprehensive reconnaissance level um, historic resources survey that we're doing of the city. We have already completed phase one. We're in the midst of phase two. Um, the EDR, who is our consultant doing phase two, is able to continue at the moment doing the, the, the survey portion. So, the, so that's good news for the moment. But um, we're already ready to uh, write a grant for the, the third and final phase. Um, and this and phase three will include neighborhoods on the south and, and east sides of the city. Um, and I don't know if you, uh, hopefully you had the opportunity to read the, the information that I sent along uh, with, the, with the letter. Um, but if you have any questions. Um, no questions related to this one, but did you, um, do you guys have a date for the completion of phase two yet? Um, phase two uh, is supposed to be done by the end of September. Um, and uh, we'll just have to see with, uh, you know, uh, with the health crisis, whether or not they are able to complete that. I think that there will be some flexibility on the state parks side um uh we should be able to move the um uh move the end date if we need to um at the moment edr is saying that they're able to to move forward but uh, we'll just have to see what happens okay and then will uh the phase three start immediately after phase no two? phase phase three wouldn't start until the spring of 2021 okay all right any other questions Thank you. Thanks. All right, and um, I think Michelle was on for items uh, 32 through 51. Yeah, um, I don't have any specific updates on any of these beyond what I sent out yesterday, but happy to answer any questions that anyone has. I had a question, uh, Michelle. Yeah, sure. I I'm just curious, normally, um, uh, the fifth district is, uh, we only have, you know, I only have one or two items most, most weeks, and there seems to be about six or so, seven that are fifth district. I was just curious, 
uh, why the jump in that particular district? Are you guys are you guys going through things neighborhood specific? Do they come in bunches like that? No, they're not necessarily neighborhood specific. Um, I think with this particular vote list, there was a lot of properties that we had been pursuing through other kind of vacant property or blight remediation pipelines that we had to kind of go those routes with them because they were not tax feasible um, and they were they were being current. So a lot of them, I think, were kind of a little bit more skewed towards the fifth district for that reason this time around. Um, now that they are feasible, it doesn't necessarily make sense for us to be using a lot of other additional legal resources to be going out of them through the court order demolition pipeline. Um, so we would rather kind of get them this way if possible. Gotcha. That answers my question. Um, any other questions from the uh, district counselors? Okay. All right, I'm all set. Thank you. All righty. Thank you. Councillor Driscoll. Thank you, Madam President. I have item 52. This is the um, environmental impact statement from CNS engineers regarding the upcoming lead ordinance. Um, after speaking with CNS due to recent events and circumstances, uh, they're not able to get this um, together in time, so I'd like to withdraw this item and um, bring it forward uh, next session. All righty. Thank you, sir. Anything you. else before we end our study session? Uh, just to say, for the first run, I think we did pretty good. We can figure out how to use some headphones and things to stop the feedback. I think it'll be a piece of cake in the future. <laughs> and it's good to see all your faces, uh, Deputy Mayor. I'm trying to dress like uh, the clerk right now. That's why I have a tie on. And I see <laughs> you, the clerk, and myself, we have some uh, similar tastes in regards to wall color. So you guys are kind of cool. I just <laughs> noticed that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, I want to get on what Councilor Pro Tem said. I think that for our first go at it, we did a great job. Everyone was able to come together. Um, and we'll just keep moving forward because we are stepping into the uncertainty and for a technically challenged person, this was a little tough for me. So thank you. Uh, President Hudson, just for, um, I was asking Evan, the one only distraction was everybody beeping in. I think that that can be controlled from the host to stop those notifications. Yeah, it's my intent to try to figure that one out because those beeps were killing me. Yeah, thank you. Quick email on how to turn it off. Uh, Evan, I'm going to call you for that uh, instruction. Last thing I want to say for anybody who uh, is, was not a part of the discussion, we appreciate you being cooperative. As mentioned, the Common Council study session is not for public comment, but we certainly welcome you. So thank you for uh, being supportive. Thank you very much. And counselors, administration, everybody, be safe. Have a great day out here. Thank you, Madam President. Thanks, you too, Thanks Madam President. President. Thanks, President Pro for hooking it up. Yes, sir. All right. Bye-bye. Bye, y'all. Bye. Bye.